Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is day two in Kauai. So I'm giving you a little update. This is what it looks like off our balcony. And there are feral chickens right there off our balcony. You can see the beautiful ocean and the chickens in the foreground. The chickens crow, the roosters crow all hours of the night, but they are cute and adorable to see. You can see one of the mama chick chickens has some babies with her next up we went on a chocolate tasting tour last week on tour there was a woman she guessed her two-year-old that's the most labor <laughs> vanilla one of the reasons why it's so labor intensive is because for every flower you see we have to hand pollinate this flower where this is native mexico central america there they have the melapona bee and this is the only insect that has learned through evolution how to pollinate this flower. To this day though, the melapona bee is facing extinction. Less than 1% of them remain. So even in this part of the world, vast majority of vanilla being hand pollinated. Okay. And I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. It's pretty small flower, unassuming, yellowish white. I know I had previously seen it on the container of my vanilla Yoplait yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> see the little flower there? Yeah. And in order to pollinate this flower, we unfortunately have to destroy it. Right enough into this light red orange color. Over on this tree, completely different variety. You guys can see we have these sage green color pods growing in this tree. When these ones ripen, they'll turn into a bright yellow. And you guys might be able to see on this tree, on these branches, tiny cacao blossoms. They're really small. They're not pollinated by the bee. They're pollinated by what's called the midge, which is like a little mosquito. They can also be pollinated by a gnat or an ant as well. When they pollinate those little blossoms, six months later, full-size cacao pot. So you can see all stages of life on these trees. And we're actually harvesting fruit from these trees all year round. Right now we're harvesting every two to three weeks or so. With these trees behind me are about 15 years old. A mature cacao tree is considered anywhere from five to seven years old. After about 40 years, we can expect the fruit production to start to slow down. But we're always planning for the future, planting lots of baby cacao trees all the time. If you guys look behind the Liggett farm sign, these are some of our teenager cacao trees. So you can see some fruit hidden within those trees. These trees aren't yet four years old, and they're really impressing us because they're already loaded with fruit. We typically wouldn't expect this for at least another year and a half. We think it's because they're right next to the gift shop. Everybody's taking photos, giving them lots of love, so they're showing off. A little bit later this morning, we'll be in our oldest orchard. So there'll be an opportunity for you to walk through the trees, touch the fruit, touch the trees. Um, but these cacao trees here, they have all different varieties that these trees will give us. We have about 10 main varieties. And this cacao pot I picked this morning. So you can see it started off this green color. It's now ripened into this yellow. And we're going to open this up a little bit later. We're going to try this fruit. Um, has anybody tried this fruit before? There was someone that visited us before, but you're in the gift shop. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. That's right. So we're going to try this fruit. Super delicious. Tastes nothing like chocolate. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's very tropical. It's like if a mango and a lychee had a baby. Very delicious. We're going to try that fruit a little bit later. Right now, we're dripping the nectar off of this fruit to make cacao nectar popsicles. You may have seen up in the gift shop, we have a little fridge where they live. But, but in, when we open this cacao pod, we will find between 30 and 50 cacao seeds. And those seeds are wrapped in that nectar, in that fruit. And we need roughly one cacao pod to make one chocolate bar. And each of these trees in a year will produce about 40 of these cacao pods. But I'll pass this around, you guys can check it out. Feel free to take photos. It's kind of like a prehistoric football. <laughs> Hold it like a baby. You can kiss it, it's organic. <laughs> this is Kauai's version of a cardinal. They're very friendly. Um, here's some fruit that was growing out in the chocolate and tour. And here's some vanilla growing in the chocolate tour. One of those wild chickens again. <laughs> And here is just a picture of our presenter at the chocolate tour. This is us getting to taste some chocolate. Here we're tasting one of the um, special types of cherries that they grow on the tour. 
This was another type of fruit. I actually forgot what that was called. Um, and then here we're actually we tasting a roasted well, we're able to cacao taste pretty clearly. bean. That this is what it looks like when it's roasted and you get to taste, we maybe get to taste bourbon, the um, some pure rums, cacao maybe red wine. bean. It was very Again, bitter. It was good, was but alcohol. very bitter. <laughs> some people will pick up on some, maybe some, some maybe dark red cherry notes, but typically more intense flavor at this point. And you'll notice it can also be astringent, meaning it can dry out the back of the mouth. Mm -hmm. So we do have water over here, if anybody would like. Mm -hmm. Now in the factory, once they receive these cocoa beans, they crush these up in a really- This is what the cocoa bean looks like before it's roasted. It has that really sweet jelly. This is what the cocoa pod looks like, that it's grown on the tree. This was just a map of the farm and these apple bananas are grown wild and quiet. They're very good. And next you're going to see some beautiful foliage on the property. Some beautiful flowers and trees. I loved walking through their property to see all of their plants that they grow here. It was really an enjoyable tour. If you ever get to Kauai, I'd highly recommend the Lydgate Chocolate Tour. And again, these are just more plants that we got to see. Here's some really cool bamboo, which is very invasive. If you ever grow it, grow it in a pot. Here's some of their flowers. We saw many beautiful flowers on our tour. And this is what they grow in those little um, protected areas is what they grow the beginning cacao trees in, the very small cacao trees to protect them from insects getting it. And look at those little tiny seed pods from that interesting um, plant. And then here, I love that little succulent coming off of that tree. I thought that was so cute. And it's just a teeny tiny little waterfall that was on their property. This flower was really cool, and the ones that were less mature were very long. This orange flower is actually an invasive species to Hawaii. The ferns definitely had these little spores on them. This was a gorgeous flower. And this bamboo was very colorful. The stalks were red and green. This flower had these little yellow pods on it. Again, here's that red and green bamboo stalk. Here's more bamboo. This was huge bamboo, just gigantic height of it. And they're finding that it is very invasive and difficult to control. Here's Brett Nice standing under one of the cacao trees. This is what a cacao pod looks like on an actual cacao tree. And this is the cacao flower. This teeny tiny flower grows into these large cacao pods. Remember the gentleman said they only get about 40 per tree in a whole year, but they are gigantic. And it takes a whole one to make one bar of chocolate. This is what a grove of cacao trees look like. They had ferns on the base layer of their forested area, which was, they were just gorgeous. The trees, the flowers, everything was beautiful about this property. Lydgate Chocolate Farm Tour. Here's a little waterfall. Next up, we did a little bit of shopping. We went to a fabric store and I loved that wall hanging. Of course, I had to have my dose of shave ice. And we went to Vicky's Fabric Store. This was more of a higher end quilting store. We also went and visited a pottery studio. I bought that mug. There was a really cool um, process they used to make their pottery. Um, and you can look them up on YouTube, actually. But this is a um, just a picture of us out shopping. Claudine and her fiancé, Christian, we ate that night at L&L &L Hawaiian Barbecue. We had the barbecue chicken with macaroni salad, which is one of the lunch plate specials in Kauai. Here we went to a really fun 
park in order to um, see the sunset. This is Hanalei Bay. That's where we watch the sunset. We just um, went and watched and beat the rain coming in. So I am going to stop talking and I'm going to let you enjoy the beautiful wave sounds and the beautiful scenery here at Hanalei Bay on the island of Kauai. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for day three.